Isn't it annoying when we have all these awesome space telescopes up in space, but we have to wait for NASA or ESA to process the data, make the images and release them before we can all enjoy those pictures? At least for the next month, that won't be the case for one of those telescopes. A new project has just launched that means that you can be the first person in the world to see images of galaxies coming off of the Euclid Space Telescope. By partnering with another project called Galaxy Zoo, Euclid is now asking for everyone's help to learn about the universe, and in particular, to learn about the shapes of galaxies it's imaged. The images that make up the project haven't been shown anywhere else, and some will have never been seen by any human eyes at all, meaning if you take part, you could be the very first. It can take weeks, months, or sometimes even years to see some of the images that the best space telescopes in the world take. Some JWST projects, for example, have a year-long embargo. And although the Euclid Space Telescope launched over a year ago, we've only seen a handful of images from it in public. These are beautiful, and I totally understand why it works like this, but the impatient part of me that wants to see more of the universe even faster doesn't like to wait. Wouldn't it be good if we could cheat somehow and see the images right away, straight off the telescope, without waiting? Well, for Euclid, for the next month at least, we can do exactly that. And here I'll show you exactly how to do it. Euclid's mission is to image a third of the sky over the next six years, imaging over a billion galaxies and working to make the largest 3D map of the universe ever. In doing so, it will send 100 gigabytes of data back to Earth every single day. That is a lot of data, and it won't be possible for human eyes to look at everything straight away. The issue though, is that we want to know as much as possible about each galaxy that we image, its shape, its distance, its color, and so on. The Euclid team can't label every one of the billion or so galaxies by hand, saying that it's a spiral or it's not a spiral or it's an elliptical galaxy. So they have two options, and actually they're kind of doing both. Firstly, they're asking for everyone's help, including mine and yours. They have a new project on Zooniverse.org, where anyone can contribute to this brand new research project. You can just search for Galaxy Zoo, or I'll leave the link in the description of this video, and you can start looking at Euclid galaxies right now. You'll be shown pictures of galaxies pretty much straight from the telescope, and ask some simple questions about the galaxy that you see. These have been selected for their size and brightness for this first project, and processed just by making any faint features more visible. They aren't fully colorized, and they aren't refined like the images we've seen released from the telescope so far, like these ones I'm showing you now, but they're much closer to what comes straight off of Euclid. For Galaxy Zoo, this is all done by an algorithm though, and there are thousands of these images in the first dataset that have never been seen by anyone. So if you participate in the project, you could well be the first person ever to see some of these galaxies. You might even discover something amazing or unexpected that leads to a whole new paper that you're an author on, and the object might even get named after you. Well, that doesn't happen a lot. You can see my video up here on Hanny's Volwerp to see an example where it did happen. Even if you don't discover something surprising in one of the images you're shown, every single volunteer who helps classify galaxies on Galaxy Zoo is acknowledged in scientific papers that use the results, and the names are listed individually at this link too. That just proves that this type of science, called citizen science, where anyone can contribute, is incredibly important. The problem of classifying galaxies isn't new for Euclid, and Galaxy Zoo has been running since 2007, asking volunteers to help us learn about the universe. What isn't possible with the relatively small telescope teams is possible with hundreds of thousands of volunteers from around the world. Until the end of August 2024, it's the turn of Galaxy Zoo Euclid, and all of the images on Galaxy Zoo right now are from ESA's Euclid telescope. The goal is to get 100,000 classifications in the month, but let's try and see if we can get even more. The more classifications we do, the more data actually gets uploaded to this project. So if you want to see even more galaxies for the very first time, then get classifying. Let me know down below if you do a lot of classifications and how many you think you've done, I'd love to hear from you. The same galaxy will be shown to more than one person to make sure we can get a consensus on what its properties are. So here, each galaxy will probably be shown to five or 10 people. In other Galaxy Zoo projects, it's shown up to 40 times, but for the Euclid purposes, it is actually better to show more galaxies fewer times than it is to show fewer galaxies many times. What are these purposes I speak of? 
Well, that's the second thing that Euclid is doing to solve this many galaxy problem. The Zooniverse platform that hosts Galaxy Zoo has an artificial intelligence algorithm called Zoobot that has been trained to try and classify galaxies automatically. So far, it's been trained on images from ground-based telescopes, as well as Hubble and JWST data. But now, we want to train it specifically to be good at classifying Euclid galaxies. In the future, it will be further trained with the results of this project. So it will get better and better at doing this, and can classify Euclid galaxies in the future for us. Even if we had a million volunteers, we wouldn't be able to classify a billion or two billion galaxies by hand. So this kind of AI algorithm is definitely needed here. In future projects though, because this is just the first Euclid Galaxy Zoo project, galaxies that Zoobot isn't totally sure about will still be shown to volunteers to get some human eyes on the more subtle cases that it can't deal with. Zoobot so far has performed pretty well on a small test case of Euclid images, but we want it to be even better so that it can do as much of the work for us as possible in the future. The best thing now though is for us to have a go at this together. Let's head over to the Galaxy Zoo project at zooniverse.org. Again, I'll link it on screen and down below. And let's see what it actually looks like to classify some galaxies. And you can see if I'm any good at it. Right, so I've just opened up the link. Uh, again, I'll leave it in the description of this video so that you can just click on it and get straight into classifying. This is the Galaxy Zoo homepage and every galaxy on Galaxy Zoo at the moment is Euclid. So you don't have to worry about finding a specific project. It's all going to be Euclid. You're met with this message. Welcome to the Euclid workflow for Galaxy Zoo, where you will see images of galaxies from the Euclid Space Telescope. The task is almost the same as ever. The images you'll see will come from the Euclid Wide Survey. That's the survey where Euclid is just imaging as much of the sky as it possibly can, but it's only doing each patch for about 15 minutes. So it's seeing a lot of galaxies, but it's not seeing super, super deep in this survey. The resolution is much better than ground-based telescopes and covers much larger areas of sky than Hubble and JWST. There are millions of galaxies. Continue. In Galaxy Zoo, we ask a series of questions about the shape of a galaxy to learn about the astrophysical processes in the galaxy's evolution. You can answer these questions without any specialist knowledge. Many of the galaxies are distant, so the answers may not always be obvious. Just take your best guess. We will be doing just that. Sometimes there are multiple galaxies in the image, always classify the central galaxy in the system. If you think there's another galaxy interacting with the central galaxy, you will have a chance to say so. If there is no central galaxy, it could be a star or artifact. There are some types of artifacts that are unique to Euclid, and identifying these will be of help to researchers as well, as we learn about the imaging from this fantastic mission. Want to see examples, press need some help with this task, or open the field guide far right at any time. Hopefully you will get away with not doing that in this video. If you found something cool or you have a question or comment, then let us know in the talk forum. Right, let's get into it. This is the first galaxy we're given. It's straight off of Euclid and maybe no one has ever seen that before. Right, this play button down here gives us slightly different filters. So there's, I think, three different filters that we can see here. One is visible light, one is uh, visible plus one band of infrared, and one is visible, but it's been processed to show fainter features uh, a little bit better. The first question is simply, is the galaxy simply smooth and rounded with no signs of a disk? Uh, I would say this looks like a bit of a fuzzy, spirally galaxy. Um, so I'm going to say feature or disk because I think I can see some spiral arms coming out here. Uh, scroll down, hit next. Uh, could this disk be viewed edge on? No, definitely not. Is there a bar feature through the center of the galaxy? That's a hard one to tell. Maybe this is a sort of bar feature, but I, I'm not confident on that, so I'm going to say no bar. Uh, but is there some spiral arm patterns? I would say that there is some spiral arms. Uh, loose, medium, or tight? Um, what do we think on that one? I think they're, they're probably quite tight. You can see sort of one, maybe two, three, four arms, and they're, they're relatively tight there, so I'm going to go with tight. How many spiral arms? Oh, I was ahead of the game. So I'd say one, two, three, definitely maybe a fourth one here. So I'm going to say four. Yeah, we'll go with four. Hit next. Is there a central bolt? This would be this very bright core in the center of the galaxy. Uh, I'm going to say, based on these pictures, it's probably a moderate one. It's definitely not dominant or large. Do we see any bright clumps? Well, I would say there's one, two, maybe three bright clumps. Yeah. Is the galaxy merging? No, I don't see any disturbance. It looks like a pretty clean galaxy to me. And do we see any of these rare features? A lens or arc? No, I don't see any lensing behind it. I don't see a ring around it. Irregular? No. Dust lane? Not obviously. An overlapping? No. I'd say there's nothing unusual about this galaxy. 
Right, and that's it. We get thrown straight to the next galaxy and we can do it all again. So let's do one more, a little bit quicker this time. I'm going to say this is a pretty smooth looking galaxy. Maybe there's a little bit of arms feature there, but I'm going to say it's smooth. Uh, it's probably, it's not completely round, is it? It's probably in between, but it's definitely not a cigar. Is it merging? No, there's maybe something up here. I can't tell if that's from this galaxy. It could be a tidal arm and a bright bit up here, or if that's a, a distant galaxy, but definitely no, no major disturbances. Uh, lens ring, irregular dust lane overlapping, something else. No, I'm going to say nothing unusual again. And we get the next one. Right, let's speed run this third one. Smooth. That's pretty much completely round. No disturbances. Next. Nothing unusual. There's a little bright spot there, but I don't see anything else uh, that's worth noting. Straight into the next one, and we get something a little bit more interesting. So let's finish up with this one. I definitely say it's smooth, no features or disc, and it's probably not an artifact. So let's hit done on that one. How round? Oh, I'd say it's pretty cigar shaped, wouldn't you? Um, and this is a difficult one because I, don't, I think this is a different galaxy, but I don't think it's involved. This here, I think, is a bright patch in the galaxy, but it's hard to say, isn't it? Um, so I'm going to say it's not merging. And again, this is the whole point of this is to take your best guess at this without any specialist knowledge. And because more than one person will be shown, the galaxies will end up getting a consensus across sort of five or ten people, hopefully. Uh, so let's hit next on that. Any of these features? No, I don't think so. I don't think there's a dust lane or a reg it's not irregular in that sense. It's just a bit cigar shaped. So let's hit nothing unusual. Hit done. And we get a new galaxy. And with that, we get a we get a quite an interesting galaxy. But I will leave it there and I will leave the next galaxies for you to classify. So please have fun and I'll see you soon. I hope you enjoyed looking at this together. And I hope you'll get involved with the project too if you have a few minutes spare. If you do and you see anything interesting, I would love to hear it down below. But use the Galaxy Zoo forum as well. Thanks so much for watching and helping out if you do. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.